So you want to become a shamanic practitioner, A. So my name is John Moore, and I'm a shamanic teacher and practitioner from the state of Maine. I uh, practice shamanism, meaning uh, professionally I see clients, and I teach people shamanism both for personal and professional use. And I want to outline the seven things I think you need before you can be a professional shamanic practitioner, meaning you can hang out a shingle and start to see clients. Um, personally, I spent about three years of training before I ever saw my first client. This isn't to say that I didn't work with friends and family, but if you are going to become a professional, you are going to see clients, you're going to run into a whole slew of things. And it can be dangerous for both you and the client if you don't know what you're doing. So it's a really bad idea and I understand you can go, you know, take a weekend class in Reiki or something and throw out a shingle and do that um, because that is the kind of, that and that's fine. And then, then that's the kind of thing you can do. But shamanism is a whole different thing. And on top of that, shamanism really is uh, a life change. It's not really something you do. It's something you become. It's home. If if it's the right path for you. And I am not recommending that everybody uh, take up shamanism. It is definitely not the right path for everybody. It's very difficult. But you feel a calling, you wanna work with other people, you wanna help other people, uh, maybe somewhere down the line, you think you wanna start taking on clients. These are the things I think you need under your belt um, at a bare minimum. And I will say that on top of this, I continually train, I continually study. I've been, uh, I spent um, something like six or seven years studying with my teacher, which included teacher training, soul retrieval, two years of initiatory training, a year apprenticeship. This is in depth stuff. It is not simple. Um, and part of it is that we don't live in a shamanic culture where you would live with. Uh, the tribal shaman who would take you under the wing and train you and even then it would probably take you years to get to the point where they would allow you to work on your own with something so if this is something you want to do I want you to be absolutely prepared for that so the first thing you need to do obviously well maybe not obviously if you don't know much about shamanism but um, you have to become an expert at shamanic journeying, particularly doing divination journeys. You have to be able to journey to the upper world, the middle world, and lower world. Uh, you have to have a level of expertise with these things. Um, divination is a critical skill because this is how we do diagnostic work. Uh, when I work with clients and they come to me and they have some issue and they want to know what it's about. I'm not going to just guess at that. I'm going to journey to my helping spirits, they're gonna show me the work that I need to do that day with that client. The next thing you need to know, and if you do an apprenticeship or you know whatever, this is one of the first things that you'll learn is how to do a power animal retrieval. Um, and this is, you'll learn how to probably find your own power animal if you don't have one, but how to do power animal retrieval for other people. This is a very common uh, thing that I that I do with clients um, very often when I in the first session or so uh, this is indicated um, and I have whole videos on what power animals are what power animal retrieval is you need to learn to do something called extraction a lot of clients will come to you <laughs> almost every client will come to you with what we call intrusions which is excess energy we pick up just in our environment from being around people who are unhappy all this stuff and it kind of blocks us up. It blocks our energy system up. And if you want to do any frequently, if you want to do any other kind of work with people, an extraction is called for first. Um, at least in my case, when I work with clients, sometimes they'll need some piece of work and my helping spirits will be like, you got to unclog the pipes first. You have to be able to do extraction. Um, the next part that is really, really critical. Um, the majority of my clients who come to me need this. Um, and that is soul retrieval. Soul retrieval is specialized training. It takes a while to learn. It takes a while to get good at. And there's a lot to it. And this is how we treat things like trauma. Um, there are a lot of, I have lots of videos on soul retrieval, soul stealing, soul loss, you know, all of these things um, that you need to learn about. So I did 
apart from all of my other training, I did specialized residential training uh, in solar retrieval. Um, you need to learn to do ancestral and past life healing. Um, a lot of people's issues, issues, diseases, things they're concerned about, things they're complaining about, um, might not have happened in this lifetime. They might have th be things they inherited from past lives or things that come from ancestors. So that, again, is another whole specialized body of work. Um, the next point number six is maybe a little bit controversial with some people because I know people who will not touch these cases and that's fine if you choose not to do that however you should know how to identify them and you should know just in case it comes up um, you know how, how to how to handle it um, and those are cases of curses and possession and the treatments for those are what we call curse unraveling and depossession, not um, uh, exorcism. It's depossession. Um, and along with that comes you, you have to have a background in death and dying work and you have to have a background in soul retrieval before you can do that stuff. So there's some prerequisites. I'm actually stating these things kind of uh, a little bit out of order, but um, nonetheless, uh, these things, there is a little bit of an order. Soul retrieval would come before um, uh, before curses and depossession. Ancestral and past life healing kind of can come anywhere in there. Number seven. This is perhaps one of the most overlooked and yet critical parts of shamanic training, and it takes a while to get used to that. Um, this is what I call um, uh, medicine language and holding space. So in the industrial world, in the compute, computer science or um, you know business or whatever, this is what we would call soft skills, people skills, learning how to talk to people and learning how to hold space for somebody who's going through something or in the process of doing healing work for some somebody, something comes up, some piece of trauma comes up, whatever. Trust me when I say that this can be a really difficult situation if you have, if all you have is the techniques, the shamanic techniques, uh, the journey techniques, whatever, and you just go, oh, here you go, and then you have somebody melting down in front of you. Um, and you don't know how to handle that. That can be diff difficult and dangerous for the client, difficult uh, and dangerous for you as well. Um, I don't necessarily mean physically dangerous, but you have to know how to communicate with people. And there is a whole skill to that that is skipped by many, many teachers out there. It's something I teach. It's something my teacher taught. I'm sure it's something her teacher taught to her. Um, it is critical. Yes, it is not, strictly speaking, a shamanic skill because these are skills that anybody can do if, even if they don't know how to journey, even if they have no spiritual background. You can learn how to talk to people. But we refer to this as medicine language or healing language. The words that you choose and how you talk to somebody, but also holding space involves knowing when not to say anything knowing how to hold a sacred container that is safe for somebody to be able to express what they need to express, to feel what they need to feel. Many times I'm working with clients and I will tell them up front, you know, when I do this for clients, sometimes their strong emotions come up. I will not be upset, judgmental, or offended by anything that you need, that you feel, that you express that comes up. If you need to cry, cry. If you feel like laughing, laugh. If you feel like swearing at me and calling me names, feel free. I'm a big boy. I can take it. These are the seven things, bare minimum. And trust me when I say I had a whole pile of other training and study and work and practice. Kind of an unspoken part of all of this is it's not enough just to learn these things uh, one time. You have to practice. You have to practice with other people. And this is why um, 
live, like training live as opposed to a pre-recorded video or, um, you know, some sort of trying to learn shamanism through a book or something like that um, is not, not the best way, right? So training live either in a class setting or one-on-one -on -one with a teacher, uh, you know, even online, but, but live with a teacher who can help you out, who can, uh, when you run into problems, but you also need people to practice with. So that's what I, this is again, my opinion, nobody else's opinion. This is not, I don't even know what my teacher's opinion is about this. Uh, I'm not representing anybody else or any organization. Uh, there are no, there's nobody who's going to uh, W qual. I mean, there might be people who W qualified to take on uh, clients, but you have to use your inner compass and say, what's going to happen if I tell this person I can help them and I run into something that I'm unprepared for in the middle of a session? What's going to happen? A lot can happen. A lot can happen in a session. Everybody who comes to you is going to be different. There is a real, uh, it is a real, real challenging thing to do on a professional level. I love it. I wouldn't want to do anything else, but um, it's not a walk in the park ever. It's never a walk in the park. It is, it is incredibly difficult work, but also incredibly rewarding. So I hope this is helpful. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I will talk to you real soon.